All right, we're here in the FGCU Media Lab, and our first guest is Mark Bull. Um, what do you do? What do I do? I hang around a bunch of students. It's kind of fun. Um, my actual name is Remarkable. It's not Mark Bull. It's oh, Remarkable. Okay. Did, man. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but it's cool. I love it. No. Um, let's start over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the first episode of Straight to the Point, and we're here with our first guest, Mark Bull, or Remarkable. Yeah. I'm Mark Bull, and I'm the entrepreneur in residence at FGCU. And what I do is I work with students in the Runway Program, which is an incubator for students to work on their own ideas. And at the end of each semester, they pitch for seed funding, and, and uh, then I work with them afterwards and help grow their businesses. And they, I can work with them while they're students, even after when they're alumni as well. And then I teach a few courses also. What's, uh, what's the greatest story of success that you've had, uh, that you've seen in a student? Um, there have been a few really good ones that have stood out. I think one is a really, really interesting story. I had a kid in my, a kid, had a student in my, in my creativity class, and he was big into rap and he wanted to become Drake and so his whole thing was become a conscious rapper and after working with him for about a year and a half he realized that he could actually he had two interests not just one one was in anime and he always kept the two separate because he didn't think it would be cool for the rappers if he was doing anime mm -hmm. and he finally combined it together into one and created a song with it and it blew up on TikTok. They created a hashtag that got 2 billion views. ESPN was used in the song, LA Clippers, 50 million streams on Spotify. He had record labels sending contracts, or at least one contract for a marketing contract. So I worked with him on that. Um, and we basically built a business around him as an entertainer and a social media guy, influencer as well. Hmm. Created a merchandise store, website, Got him copyrighted and trademarked for his music and songs so he could actually get paid. And uh, huh. now I help him with his taxes, so that's kind of good. <laughs> Quite the transition there. Yeah. But yeah, I, I heard all about that song, so it's just kind of interesting to hear all this extra stuff. I had no idea yeah. about all that being approached by left record labels and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, it's so, yeah. really interesting. He's a great kid. We still stay in touch, um, and hopefully he can continue on with his career. So, I mean, speaking of this artist, um, you know, it kind of makes me think, like, what is the biggest mistakes you see some students make that hinder their success? He was in my office regularly, two, three times a week um, in between classes. And he would come in and we'd decide to say, okay, let's work on being creative or work on being productive. And those were the two things that we always tried to figure out what was important. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, though, I think one of the biggest mistakes, because at the beginning you're trying lots of different things. But at some point, it becomes overwhelming because you're trying to do SoundCloud and TikTok and Snap and, and all the different, and YouTube and create, and nothing was working. Yeah. So once, and I saw that he was getting overwhelmed by it, and he also went through periods where he just was getting down on the whole process, but he kept coming back, and then we were able to simplify the process and just focus on one medium on TikTok, and there was only 15, 30-second videos, clips, and created the song for that, and then that blew up everything else. So mm -hmm. it really became one. You, you all. We always say try different things and experiment, but at some point you have to make the decision to go down one path and focus on that, and see if that works, and then grow from there. So the mistake that a lot of them have is they try to. They always say my target market is. They use the word people. You know, mm -hmm. like what people? There's seven billion people, people like on the earth. It's like, bit. yeah, narrow it down. Not just, not just to even. And everyone complains that it's male. You don't have a big market. I say, forget that. If you can find ten people that really believe in you and they kind of match your what you're trying to do and see value in it, then you sell to those ten people and you really take care of them and they'll tell their friends. And so the marketing becomes your first customers. Mm -hmm. And if you really 
really build a network around them, it'll grow outside of that just by staying true to who you are instead of trying to be something to everybody. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It I works. Guess you could say yeah. uh, you're a remarkable guy. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, what you, what you said really does make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, as an entrepreneur myself, um, well, you know, future entrepreneur, I mm -hmm. hope, it kind of opens my eyes a little bit when I hear stuff like that about, you, you know, because I have that same problem just with trying to find my target market and everything. So it just helps me a lot to hear that, that there are people that have the same problems, you know? Yeah, and that's the major problem. And I think if you take it another step and you're just building it for one person or ten people, all of a sudden your website design gets really simple. Your message mm -hmm. is to that person, to that one or two or ten people. And all your messaging, your marketing is to that person. Mm -hmm. And what happens after that is you hope that there's more people like them that will connect to it. And that's when you start knowing that you've got something that's working. But it's really hard to build something for everybody. Yeah. And so build it for one and start with that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then you just grow and then, then eventually keep adding things keep, to other people. And then you can yeah. add other features or whatever else other people may need, but they like the core idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting to see that like transition from people who might just be creating a shop, you know, a clothing shop, and then, like you said, with the artists, just, like, focus on this form of media and then go to this. I just think it's interesting to see how that works with different forms. It's A lot of it has to do with um, the, the ability to not feel overwhelmed, okay? So because mm -hmm. you can get overwhelmed with all these different technologies and, and you think you've got to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so when you simplify where you're going – you can actually be more focused on the content and more focused on the message. And mm -hmm. and it just makes things a little clearer. Yeah, it yeah. makes a lot of sense. So speaking of students' failures, um, you know, I want to hear a little bit more about you. Like, have you ever failed? Have I ever failed? Um, if I haven't failed, then I really haven't grown <laughs> as a person. Um, I have failed in every aspect um, along the way sometimes on a daily basis, <laughs> even when I'm teaching it. Uh, but, but in terms of some big things that have, you know, created a pause in your career or whatever, um, there's a lot of things. You fail for many different reasons, but I kept looking at it like this. Um, I am, everything that I've done in terms of a career, in terms of even a job, Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do it when I took the job for every single job I had since college. And so what I had to do was figure out a way to learn while I was working. And the best way for me to learn was to be able to make mistakes and be able to fail. And maybe failing, failing sometimes was like I was just in the wrong job. It didn't, wasn't a good fit or... I just wasn't ready for that job. And so it forces you to figure out how do you keep things moving? How do I stay on this path that I'm trying to stay on? And, and so, but it wasn't until I got into entrepreneurship. And I got into entrepreneurship because I always wanted to start something, but I was mm -hmm. always in the corporate world and I was moving up in jobs and taking on more responsibility and seemed to be a good life. Um, and then in 2006, I was... Uh, diagnosed with a brain tumor, and and then I had to have radiation surgery and laser surgery and all that. On and so my kids were really young. I was trying to figure out, you know, you, you you're facing the Grim Reaper for the yeah. first time, and it came down to within six months after that is when I started my first business. Mm -hmm. So it's it just sometimes you put things off until you realize like I don't want to put this off mm -hmm. anymore. Because there may not be something later. And so it, 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 whatever, so I don't, when I'm working with students, I don't really, when they make, I want them to make mistakes. I want them to be challenged. Mm -hmm. And I want them to get on the path that they want to be on. And then whether they have a success or a failure, ignore it. Mm -hmm. Learn from it. Don't stop because you got successful. Don't stop doing what got you there. 
Yeah. And don't stop because you failed at something and you feel like I can't do something. Just try and keep moving on that path. And looking back on that first time teaching, I'm, it's interesting because about three, I was taught the class three or four times in a row each sem I mean, each semester. So I started feeling overconfident going into it mm -hmm. and thinking that I'm going to be able to connect with students and they're going to learn and we're all going to have a great time. And, and that arrogance kind of held me back from connecting with some of them. So I realized that halfway through that it's not the same environment that I was creating for the students. Mm -hmm. So I came out of that semester going, okay, go back to what got you know, what, what works. Don't get arrogant. Don't get cocky in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's where I thought, you know, I failed a little bit for that class. And But you you want to do better. Mm -hmm. So Well, I can confidently yeah. say I took one of your classes and uh, – Definitely have improved then from, <laughs> from what you're saying right now. I try. So, we'll see. Yeah. Did you pass? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope. If I, know you did, Cole. So, yes, <laughs> you I know you did. Yes, you did. I know you did. You did great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yep. <laughs> so, what's next for you then? What's next for me is, as entrepreneur residents in a university environment with a lot of students and a lot of stuff going on externally and internally in the university. Um, the, the, the most important part for me is, because I've been five years now out of business, is to stay relevant so I can end up to speed on technology changes and things going on in the market. So I'm not teaching you guys something that was big 10 years ago mm -hmm. or 15 years ago. That's something current today. So um, I'm actually... I've actually, over the last year, become a no-code developer of a <laughs> website for helping kids get recruited for soccer. And I'm, I'm, I had this idea for about two years because I've been working with local players and mm -hmm. getting recruited. And But there was no technology that was worth it out there. A lot of them were pretty frustrating to use and rip-offs. Yeah. I and remember so, when my brother was looking to, to get mm -hmm. scouted and everything, he was struggling looking for sites like that. So. Yeah, exactly. And so what I've done is built this huge database of schools that you can look at, see if you can afford it, see if you can get into it, what the average salaries are coming out of school. So you mm -hmm. can really evaluate the schools along with the soccer programs. So you don't have to go to all these sites that kind of rip you off because you're overwhelmed and the parents are overwhelmed and they, mm -hmm. want, they want to help. But it's something that I had to learn how to use no code, which is a new technology trending in the last five years in a system called Bubble. And for me, I'd only done a, a Squarespace or Wix sites before. Mm -hmm. This was a whole different animal. And I was learning it also because I wanted to be able to learn it so I could teach the students how to build something without a technical founder. Yeah. Because most of the time you have a great idea, but you're not technical. No code is that. And so I think the next part in my thing here is to make sure that and I'm working with Dr. Arsenal on this as well, is to make sure our students know what's available and know how to get started and can use it. Because one of the big problems that all of our students have is they come up with a great idea, but they're not a tech founder. Mm -hmm. And either finding a so so software engineer is hard or another tech founder or co-founder. So this is a way for you to take control of it yourself. So speaking of these no-code websites, you know, you obviously are proficient in them. Um, are there any sites like that you would... Like any other sites you would recommend to young entrepreneurs out there? Uh, yes, <laughs> because <laughs> a lot of building a solution has to do with figuring out which tech pieces will help me launch this thing for the cheapest amount of money possible. Mm -hmm. And so much of it is tech-driven now. Um, there's a company called ConvertKit, which is really good at helping new collecting emails and email marketing when you start building a business you want to reach out to your current new customers or potential ones and it's really it's built by a, a founder that started it just three or four years ago and it's so much better than some of the older ones that are out there like MailChimp and these others mm -hmm. because it's a founder that built it recently and so it made it simpler for most founders to get up to speed on and use it there's all kinds of video editing and you know, there's so many different ways to get content created that's mm -hmm. really good. And just accessible. And accessible, and you just need to know that it's there and how to use it. And those are simple things to do now, which I really, really like. 
the whole world is getting built around how do you support startups mm-hmm. and how do you support creators, not just startup founders, but creators that can create cool stuff. Yeah. And before it'd be like get on Instagram platform or Facebook platform and you have to do it there. And now you can create your own platform. You can use a community. You can build your own community on Mighty Networks or Circle or all these and just put a link on your website and it opens up and it works just like those other groups, platforms, but you go directly to them and they have a closed network with you. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of creators are using this to basically take their fans off of the big platforms that make all the money and you get all these ads pounded to you and just take care of your fans in your own community. So those are new technologies. Um, we've got other things that are crazy like you know AI and, mm. and machine learning and all the all, other stuff that are gonna impact a lot AI. of things. But and NFTs and crypto and all that. But I do think the main thing is there's so much more technology that can take someone like I talked about before, Apollo Fresh. He was a creator. Mm-hmm. The creator economy is here, and you don't have to start a product, a physical product company, to go out and expand. You just work on your own personal brand, and the tools are there to do that. So whatever our students want to work on. We want to give them the, you know, the technology that's there that can help them do that. So that's part of that's a big part of our job. I like how you brought a little full circle there from bringing it back to Apollo Fresh. Sounds like he's one of your biggest accomplishments, then, right? Oh, uh, he's he's one I'm very proud of. They're proud of a lot of students that had different paths. His is unique because it was a mix of social media, and, and a lot of people are con- issued about that, concerned about that. I have another student that started his own online bank. You know, and he was 19 or 20 when he came into my office and said, I want to start a bank, you know. And I'd worked in banking before and all that, so I knew the challenges of it. But the technology had changed so rapidly mm-hmm. that he was, a lot of these little smaller challenger banks is what they call them, were popping up everywhere. There's one built in Atlanta. It's a new one. It's called Greenlight. And they are an online bank. For, it's an app that parents can get for their kids and they can set up budgets with them. They can teach them financial planning, how to do different things, let them um, shop at certain restaurants and not others, mm. spend them. And it's all to help teenagers learn how to manage money. And it's well over a billion dollars now. And the way it works is the technology is the front end. The company really just does the marketing and taking care of stuff. There's a bank behind the scenes, kind of like the Wizard of Oz, in the, <laughs> that sits behind the scenes and manages all the banking stuff. But mm-hmm. the front end is this marketing company that has an app that helps online banking. Yeah, and so he was, he's doing that now, and he was, he's doing very well with it, has grown it, and got picked, um, um, won a number of awards in Silicon Valley, Entrepreneur of the Year, Young Entrepreneur of the Year, um, from this big Silicon Valley venture capitalist and his foundation. Um, he's gotten some other awards as well. He's done very well. But he built it right here. And so the online banker guy and the anime rapper were in my office like every other day, <laughs> sitting there working on ideas that had nothing to do with their own business, but had to do with how are we going to market better? How are we going to get our messaging better? So that was a really cool environment. You know, you know. Now that all happened mm-hmm. before covid but I hope that we can get back to that again where students are working together and coming into the offices and doing all that because that makes the whole place come to life. It seems like we are, and that's why we're able to sit here on this podcast right now. There we now. go. Unfortunately, that's all we're going to have time for today. But uh, thank you for being with us today, Mark. I appreciate the interview. From his own website to his TikTok alias, Daddy Bowl. We hope you enjoyed, and we hope we'll see you next time.